The Women Conquer Business Show is an educational how-to women in business podcast that features stories, marketing news, and real-life experiences from fun and friendly hosts, Jen McFarland and Shelley Carney. Join us as we dive into the details so you can slay marketing overwhelm, streamline processes, and amplify your impact. You'll learn strategies and tactics, leadership skills, and practical advice from successful women entrepreneurs to help you grow, nurture, and sustain your business. (laughs) Okay, that was fun. I don't know what just happened, but welcome to Women Conquer Business. I'm Jen McFarland, who apparently has not mastered StreamYard yet. And I am joined by Shelly Carney. I am here, and it's okay. That's what happens when you go live. There's going to be uh, little glitchy things that you work your way through, and that's life. Yeah. <laughs> so we're um, today we're going to talk about topic clusters. So it's coming up with fresh ideas based on your own expertise. We've talked a lot over the last few weeks about. Uh, researching content based on customer testimonials and basic keyword research. But if you want to know the secret to reach the right audience with your expertise, the solution is within you. And oh, by the way, it will really help you rank with Google. And it's a really good thing to use if you want to come up and search. So this week's show is all about creating topic clusters. Or when I'm working with my clients, I often call them content themes uh, based on your expertise. And you'll find that you have this gold mine within you. um, And we're going to help you unlock those riches today. Riches, treasures. Treasures. Yeah. All right. What's up? So in my life, I'm still at my mom's house. And she came home on Saturday. And we have been adjusting to that. Uh, We're getting the correct equipment in place. We have home helpers coming in and uh, we're getting used to each other. She's got uh, physical therapy and occupational therapy going on still. People who are coming to the home to help her with those things. So uh, it's, it's a good move forward. But at the same time, it was like, you know, stressful for her. So it's kind of like, this time period of transition and then we're ready to move ahead now i think we're in that place where she's good with being at home and good with people coming in to help and now she's ready to get to work on her physical therapy so it's all good wow yeah how about you i have been heads down working on this presentation for uh, the association of philanthropic council so i have Um, some clients who are nonprofit consultants, they help nonprofits do capital campaigns and fundraise. They help them hire people. You know, they're just like, they're like us, they're consultants, but they help nonprofits exclusively. And I, they asked me to come speak at their conference in Portland and I'm super excited. Um, It's going to be fun. It's right down on the riverfront. Um, It's supposed to be like 85 and sunny tomorrow there. So I'm going to speak for about an hour and a half about how to market your nonprofit consultancy. And then I'm going to go walk along the river (laughs) and just enjoy the weather. I've been waiting for this for months. We've had blue skies almost all week. And yeah, in fact, after this, I'm going to go take my dog for a walk and go enjoy it because it's just, it's, it's phenomenal here. So I'm really excited. I get to meet, I I have been collaborating with this group for their conference now for a few months and, um, and the weather's hitting at just the right time. So I I just, I think it's going to be really fun, but yeah, I've been like super like laser focused on that. And uh, I think it's going to be super fun. And in fact, you're, you're breaking news. (laughs) That's the thing I gave up to, speak at this event. I had tickets to VidCon. I had my hotel. I had everything and I had to cancel it all. Oh. Uh, but it's worth it because this is going to be this, this is going to be a great event. So very good. Yeah. Oh, I'm um, also I'm still completing the prep for my course live cast life style. And one of the funny things is my daughter has decided that she and her two of her friends are going to revitalize her YouTube channel where she focused on 
Weird Al Yankovic. They're super fans. <laughs> and uh, awesome. she's revitalizing that with these young ladies. And there are other, there is another podcast out there. A friend of hers uh, is doing his own podcast. There's a couple of guys doing this. Uh, so she's like, well, how am I different? And what, what, what's, you know, how, and how do I do this? And so I've been working with her on her channel, uh, ex, you know, and telling her YouTube first, right? Uh, live stream first, and then create the podcast from that. And I've been walking her through it and she keeps coming up with more questions. So I said, go through my slides for my course. I think they're going to answer a lot of your questions. And then you can also kind of tell me if you have any new questions based on that. And then I can, you know, that'll help me make the course even better. So I'm uh, looking forward to that uh, course coming out. I um, think I'm going to wait till I get home to record it though. So it may not come out till early to mid July. But if you would like to get on the waiting list for that course, you can go to course.livecast.life and sign up to be on that waiting list. So you'll know uh, that when it comes out, and if you're on that list, you'll be offered a special discount for friends and family uh, discount for our early bird signer uppers. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's, cool. that's really exciting. Yeah. And, um, you know, we were talking earlier about different platforms for for your daughter and like how to do it. Platforms like Patreon, they just take such a huge um, uh, percentage out of you know any revenue that you generate. So um, it is, you know, there are a lot of options out there. And so she's been talking. You know, you guys have been figuring out where to put her platform so that she can raise money, giving up a lot to some of these other platforms you know the creator the struggles of a creator are very real <laughs> because you know you you make things and you want people to participate and, and then it seems like there's always something out there who um wants to and you're breaking up a little bit maybe you might move your microphone just a little bit closer it's so funny okay there what you about go. Now? all right okay so um so breaking news, it is VidCon this weekend. Yeah. yeah. That would have been awesome to go. It's in mm -hmm. Anaheim. Uh, I had in Anaheim. Anaheim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's in Anaheim. And it, 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 they, it, they had it all set up really great so that kids could go. And they had daycare. And they have all different mm -hmm. kinds of topics. They, had, they have groups where you can meet some of the big influencers on YouTube and TikTok and all kinds of places. It, yeah. it, it's going to be a really neat event. So I didn't realize that you could get in on it through um, through YouTube. Yeah, yeah. They have a, a YouTube channel. VidCon has a YouTube channel, and they are doing some of the content will be live streamed on their channel. I'm not sure how long they're going to keep it up uh, on on the channel, but they've got it all set up for the different talks. So uh, you can go there and subscribe and click on the bell to get notified when they go live. They're going to be incorporating a lot of, uh, you know, ads and stuff for for their sponsors in their live stream. So it's, you know, valuable for their sponsors and them to do it, uh, to share that content in that way so that more people can see those sponsors and advertises. Um, and yeah, uh, we're going to put the YouTube link for VidCon in the show notes so that you, if you want to know more about it, you can, or you can just look it up on YouTube, VidCon. Yeah. And I forgot to do the breaking news. <laughs> I forgot to do the sound. Sorry. That's <laughs> okay. Uh, so Toby got his new uh, Roadcaster Pro 2. So he's going to bequeath me the roadcaster <laughs> when I get home so I can have new sounds too. So we can all have sounds. All have sounds. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a lot of other breaking news. I've been reading some interesting blog posts about Google. There's a lot going on right now with Google analytics and what they're going to replace it with. How are they going to do the cookie list future of mm -hmm. um, tracking and ad tech? But there's just nothing definitive yet to really report yeah. breaking news. So I guess I have, we should move on to training. Yeah. 
Okay. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> so it's kind of like baseball. Woo! <laughs> Let's play ball. So it's kind of a, yeah, it's kind of about like kind of leveling up. That was kind of why I picked that. Uh, mm pick that sound so uh it's funny we have this show flow which we've talked about a few times and on here <laughs> shelly asked me if i was still recovering from my concussion because it looks like code in here of like all these different topics and so i'll be taking the lead on this and shelly's gonna be asking me a lot of questions and talking about her experiences with this but topic clusters are really important. And one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about this is I, I work with a lot of people and I've talked to a lot of business owners and they have a really hard time coming up with ideas that are, well, to talk about. What do I talk about? They don't, they don't know what they can talk about in their expertise. And so what we're going to go through are a few things that are important as you think about the types of topics you want to discuss and how to brainstorm it so that you're not only getting the expertise, meaning you're bringing the right people in as you talk about the things that are important to you, but you're also going to get the search benefit from it because you're going to be talking about a broad range of topics. And then I'll show you how that plays out on your website. Um, you could do the same thing, I think, on YouTube, you know, where your related videos are related to all of these other elements. You can do this on LinkedIn if you have a LinkedIn newsletter and you want to link to like all the different newsletters. There's a lot of ways you can do it. Fundamentally, this is about, because we're kind of talking a little bit, last week we talked about blogging. So this week we're talking about how to plan out your blog a little bit. But you could use this for just about any topic that is within your expertise that you want to explore. Is that right, Shelly? I can link everything the way that I said in YouTube, right? All the cards and everything. Yeah. 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 So, so you could do these deep dives in this way. You could do it. You can also do it with your podcast. Essentially, that's what we're doing here, where we're taking these different topics and, 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 and we're diving. And sometimes in. you just don't know what people are going to find interesting. Um, the other day, Yesterday, Toby's like, I don't know if I want to do this show because I don't, I don't know if anybody's going to show up. And I'm like, <laughs> if you're excited about it, they will be excited about it. So, yeah, let that inform you because that, inform you. that show did really well and a lot of people showed up and watched it. So, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to explore it and we're going to see what happens next. So. The first part is to really think about how you are communicating. And what this is called in I don't know, SEO land is EAT and or eat, which is funny because my example is about chocolate cake. So I guess I guess it's all kind of tied together. So eat is what Google is looking for when they're trying to decide if your website is worthy of sending people to. It could be the same thing where, you know, when you are, if you create a lot of YouTube videos, you know, and you see previews of videos coming up in search, it would be the same thing. So they're looking at these different layers of who you are, what you do in order to determine whether or not to serve your content up. The first dimension of that is E or expertise. And they're looking at the creator themselves. So that would be like, in this case, they're looking at Jen McFarland and Shelley Carney. What is the body of work that these creators have made? <laughs> and they can look at everything. And so they're looking and evaluating whether your expertise is aligned. This is why if you are an acupuncturist, you don't want to suddenly be talking about something completely unrelated, like lighting your live stream. <laughs> you want to stay in your lane because Google is looking for all of the things that are part of your lane. Does that make sense? Like uh, It does. And uh, we have found that when you completely radically change, sometimes you're going to have a small group of people who do stay with you because they like you. They will stay with you no matter what you're talking about because they just like you as a person, a friend, a brand, whatever. Uh, as long as you're not going like turning into a different person, they like you. So 
you can change your brand. You can change your focus. You can uh, hone in on things a little more if you need to in the future. But to get started, of course, you want to be very clear about who you are, what you're talking about, and who you're talking to. Absolutely. And that is entirely about expertise. And again, we're talking about Google, but the same is true with your audience. Like, you know, what Shelly's talking about, like whether they're going to follow you or not. And you have experience in this because you made a radical shift, you know, from talking about treasures to talking about content marketing, oh, content marketing. <laughs> how, uh, you know, how you put out the information about treasures, basically, was what I was going to say. It was related, but, you know, and you've, you've retained some of the audience. You know, but then from the Google perspective, they're like, wait, they were talking about treasures. So it takes a while then to build up that expertise so that Google will send people to you. So there's kind of two different layers of what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is the audience layer and the people who know you layer <laughs> and then the people you don't know who largely come from Google, other people sharing, you know, all of that kind of expertise that you're sharing that then other people want to share your work with with their friends. So then the second layer is authoritativeness and it is the actual content itself. So it's not only you as a creator it is, or the professional, if you're a professional, you are a creator if you're putting something out into the world, it's also the content itself. Is the content itself good or are you just creating it for the sake of getting clicks without any substance, or are you creating it just to sell something that you don't really know what you're talking about? You know, we're seeing this happening a lot where people get something like Jasper or PepperType or some of these AI writing programs and they just enter a topic and create gobbledygook just so that they can rank. And now what Google is doing is they are going through with humans <laughs> It's crediting, but it takes a while to do it. So it's really important that whatever you create is from is within your expertise and is authoritative, meaning you're creating it to create value, to help people, um, and that it is based on expertise. And part of what helps with that is if you link to other things. So something like uh, topic clusters, you might link out to HubSpot or uh, SEMrush or, you know, any of these different SEO companies to show that you have well-researched it and you're like within your lane of expertise. That's right. And the way you present it, uh, it can be attractive as well. So, uh, for instance, if you're doing a demo of a product and here's how you use it, here's step by step, uh, and then your review of it, uh, people are going to watch it again and again, because they're going to go through those steps with you. Uh, but if you are doing a conversation about a topic, you're more likely to get people in the beginning where it's live, and they can participate in that conversation. So you want to think about how you're presenting your content as well. That's right, 100%. And then the third dimension that Google is looking at is a little bit more technical and, and kind of not. Like, it's the website. It's the platform itself. So if you're presenting on YouTube, well, they like their own platform. <laughs> but if you have your own website, which I highly recommend, it's looking at things like, what's the other content on that website? Is that trustworthy? Is it coded well or does it have malware or viruses on it that could be harmful to other people? Does it have, is it well coded? Does it perform well or are people going to have to wait eight seconds before the, the website even loads? You know, it's looking at the overall, you know, how long has the website been around? The overall trustworthiness of the content itself where it lives. So these three things go together hand in hand. And that's really one of the basis for how Google is looking at your work. How do we know this? Because this is one of the few things that Google has actually written up <laughs> on their website as one of the ways that one of the factors for how they're looking at you and looking at your content. So how you communicate is incredibly important. Having one website with all of your stuff is really important. 
because you're not spreading out your creator expertise among a, a lot of places. You can have content on YouTube and Apple Podcasts and LinkedIn, but ultimately you really do want to have that content hub in one place where you are putting all of your authority and expertise in one place. Okay. No, I no, okay. <laughs> I know you worked know. really hard on that and uh, I'm still, I'm still getting there. Uh, we do have our live cast life hub where all of our content lives and our about page tells you what we do, but it's, it's not maybe as beautiful and um, user friendly as what Jen has. Well, yeah, I've worked really hard on it. Yeah. <laughs> changed a lot even since we've known each other, Shelly. So it, it, it's a process. And that's the thing. I always tell people in the beginning, you just want that good enough website and you want to get the hang of whatever it is that you're doing. So don't put a lot of pressure on yourself on the trustworthiness of a website, but just know that it'll come, especially if you continue to create things within your expertise that are helpful and authoritative. So that those, those are the two that you maybe have more control over, especially if you're not a web developer yourself and you don't have, or a brand specialist and know everything about branding. So uh, the next dimension is the next set of, uh, the next acronym is, you know, your money or your life. So what this means, and I think that this is interesting because it really does seem to me like this is encompasses all topics, <laughs> but the next dimension is, are you providing accurate information? Could your information do harm? And you could say, well, we already talked about that. That's authoritativeness, right? It is, but it's also something separate that's being looked at. And you could, I know people will look at these topics and think, well, I have seen things that are harmful in any one of these things. So it's a judgment, right? Like whether or not something is doing harm or not. I think it's an entirely a judgment. What is that kind of your take on this? Uh, I think you have to be careful in, in what you're using to support your, uh, your theories, your arguments. Um, in our case, if you go into our little treasure community, there are people who are supposing where the treasure was hidden and nobody knows for sure, except for a couple of people like the ranger of Yellowstone National Park and the person who found the treasure. They know where it is, exactly the geographical coordinates of where it is, but other people are supposing about it. And then they take those suppositions and treat them as fact. And then they start to build their case upon that. And then they get angry at anybody who questions their facts. Uh, so you have to be careful you're not doing that, that what you state as a fact really is a fact and not just your opinion and then building your case and then, you know, if that I'm right and you're wrong kind of an attitude. If you have good, strong uh, research and uh, surveys that you can use and, and support your theories and uh, your arguments, then, you know, then you can build upon that. And then you can tell people, this is my opinion here's how I feel, and not to treat it like it is the one and only way to do things. Absolutely. And how do we know that your money or your life is important? We know that it's important because Google has told us it's important. We know it's important because it's also talked about on several different places. Again, all of the main SEO topics, main SEO providers, everybody's talking about how important good content is. So, um, so what are the topic areas where they consider <laughs> your um, your money or your life or these to be critical topics? I, like I said, it's just about everything. So it's like news and current events. So that includes this because this is about business and tech and you know we don't talk about science, but science. It also is government and law. So anything about politics or the legal system, anything related to that, financial advice, so investments, retirement, um, you know, crypto, all of that kind of thing, uh, shopping information, so product reviews and, and research in, in that regard, anything about shopping, 
medical advice, so drugs, hospitals, emergencies, all anything in that realm is considered, you know, inaccurate information could do harm. And then people. So that encompasses race, religion, sexuality. These are very broad topics. So it's really easy to have information taken down if you are not dedicated to providing the best information available. Yes. And if you care about your audience, then you're going to care about the validity of what you're saying and uh, explaining to them. Yeah. And you're going to have to talk about where it is that it comes from and how this fits within your area of expertise. So those are the two things that are just kind of, we're grounding, I want to ground us in when we come up with our topic ideas, the things that we want to talk about that are the most important to our area of expertise, they all have to remain high quality, focused, and linking out to all of the other the greatest resources because we always want to create the highest level of content possible. And this is what helps us show up more online because this is a lot of work writing a blog or creating a video, all of these things are a lot of work. So you want to make sure that whatever it is that you're doing, it is definitely going to get seen and heard and appreciated by all of your people. So the next thing that, that you at least have to think about at a very high level is that people search for a reason. So if you think about it, they, the latest statistics are that like 87% of all people with a smartphone, which is a lot of people because <laughs> of smartphones, they're using their phone as a search engine 87% of the time, like so every day. <laughs> and we're all searching for different reasons. We might be searching to navigate to something, just to learn about something. That's what's called a navigational search. I don't know anything about this topic. Um, help me understand. Like it's just a, a big general search you know, and, and you might want to come up for that. You know? but then there's like informational. So what is this? <laughs> and like, how, what is some specific, inf some specific information on a topic? So it could be like, what is live streaming? Or what is acupuncture? Or what is business coaching, marketing coaching, energy healing, whatever that topic is, okay? And you want to have story studies about that. And again, I want to encourage people to really think about what it is that they look for in search, because what we're going to talk about is capturing people with the law, the big searches. So the big, like, what is this? <laughs> and then getting them into your content. So they go all the way down to where the more commercial or transactional pieces where you're comparing products or you're encouraging people to buy from you. And part of that is that you want them to get in on a general search and then just start weaving through all of your levels of expertise. And that's really what leads people to buy. And the reason is it takes so many contact points now for people to decide whether or not they're interested in what it is that you're talking about and how you talk about it, what your services are, that really what you have to do then is um, find different ways to get people at different points in the funnel. So they're like, man, you know, Women Conquer Business keeps popping up or wow, you know, Shelly keeps coming up. You know, this is kind of how that we do that is that we, um, we go through and um, make different types of content. We describe our expertise in several, several different ways and it eventually will become the contact point that will lead to a sale. You can separate your content out into these different playlists so that you have a playlist that covers the definition of, you know, the, the overview of what it is that you talk about. Then you can have a playlist that uh, gets more into the informational. Then you can have a playlist that describes uh, products and, uh, you know, reviews of that sort. And then you can get into the transactional, how can I help you? Or you can also do a, one piece of content that funnels all of that, starts off with the definition and then works down to the end where the transaction is. A lot of webinars start off that way. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. 
although there are a lot of webinars that seem to just go straight to the transactional <laughs> and i don't think they're as good they're not no. as they're not helpful they're not helpful and so, people are going to sign off yeah yeah and so that's 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 why we talk about this we want to help you welcome people in and work their way through all of the different layers and levels of what it is that you are offering and all of your layers of expertise. That's why there's so much gold inside of you as the expert is you have this within you that you can talk about all these different dimensions and, and, and help people in these different ways. So how does this play out? I'm kind of scared to show this next slide. Um, for those of you who are listening, it's going to be a lot of arrows. So <laughs> the way that this works, this is a topic cluster. So the way that you do this is maybe you have four or five different layers of expertise. Maybe you have four or five different services that are all related to one major broad topic. So you have one topic hub. So say you wanted to talk about leadership and next week we're gonna talk about what that means, that pillar post or skyscraper page. And you wanted to have one big post about leadership. And then you have all these different dimensions of leadership discussed in that one post, but then you break it off and write articles about each of those different dimensions to bolster your overall position and expertise in leadership. So it's a lot of different related topics surrounding one big topic hub. And that's essentially what a topic cluster is. Okay. <laughs> so what, the, are those letters significant? They are. It's like the informative or the navigational or the commercial or the transactional. So each one of your supporting articles about a particular topic, they also could be how to's, which are typically navigational or people are trying to learn something. They can be comparing two different products that is helping people understand and maybe get closer to making a, a buying decision. They can be commercial. So that is when people are ready to buy. You're kind of lining up, well, you're not kind of, you're exactly lining up everything that you talk about within your expertise with a different stage of the content funnel. So you're capturing the people who have general questions and then you're capturing the people who are ready to make a buying decision. Cynthia it says it's very helpful. She loves it. Who says this? Cynthia Mosser. Hey, Cynthia. I'm so glad to see you. Uh, okay. So what does this look like in real life? It looks like this. And Shelly is so mad at me for not having a piece of chocolate cake and, on here. And the background even, you know, can have one big chocolate thing in the background. So the topic cluster example that I have is chocolate cake. And you might have, so say you talk a lot about recipes, say you talk a lot about baking, and one of your specialties is making chocolate cake, for example. So you have all these different things that you can be talking about related to chocolate cake. But the thing I want you to notice is that all of these topics, they don't overlap entirely. You're not talking about the same thing over and over and over again, you're talking about different aspects of chocolate cake. So for example, is flourless chocolate cake gluten-free? This is a question. This is a question that a lot of people might have and they're just looking it up. But then if they get there, then they might be like, oh, there's a lot of, a lot of blog posts here about chocolate cake. So you link back to your ultimate guide to all chocolate cakes because maybe they're not just interested in flourless chocolate cake and whether or not it's gluten-free. Maybe they want some good recipes. So you have like the ultimate guide to chocolate cake, but then you offer different topics around chocolate cake. So it could be chocolate cake versus chocolate brownies. Those taste different, right? I think they do. <laughs> you could yeah. also have chocolate yeah. cake versus... Uh, chocolate cake versus cupcakes, also different. Chocolate wedding cakes, chocolate cake recipes, how to bake a chocolate cake, low calorie chocolate cake, and nutritional facts about chocolate cake. So these are all different ways that you can be talking about the topic of chocolate cake, but 
it's all different areas. And these are different people who are going to be looking for different aspects of this. You could do this if your area of expertise was marketing. So say your central point is email marketing. You don't do like 10 posts about what is email marketing because they start to cancel each other out after a while. You would do maybe, you know, how to get higher engagement. Which email marketing platforms do I want to use? How do I write an engaging newsletter headline, right? So you're talking about all these different elements that are related to your centrally focused hub or your big topic, but they're a little bit different. The other thing that you can do, and this is also really important, is say you have four or five different layers, different types of expertise. So in the case of our chocolate cake blogger, they maybe also talk a lot about low calorie sweet treats and they talk a lot about things like frosting or different things that you can use to decorate your cake or different elements that are related. You also want to speak to those things and make sure that people know where to find those other topics so they can always stay on your website or stay in whatever your content bucket is. If it's, you know, again, LinkedIn or YouTube or, you know, wherever it is that you're keeping all of your content, you want to make sure that people know <laughs> that they're in the right place and that they can get access to all different types of things. And that's essentially what a topic cluster is and then how you get people out to some of your related content. So that one in the middle is that your, that's your skyscraper tentpole. Yeah. So that is your skyscraper or your um, pillar post. It's called a lot. Um, and you can do this in a lot of different ways. So when I talk to clients about this, I don't, call it topic clusters. I call it um, content themes. So you maybe have like one area of expertise and that's like your hub. That's the main thing that you'll talk about. And you might have one really long post that describes it. And then you have themes or different ways that you're talking about it. You can do this with social media. Uh, for example, you could be like this month, I'm going to talk about blogging, you know, or this month, I'm going to talk about social media. And then, you know, one week you talk about social media scheduling tools. And one week you talk about how to engage. One week you talk about productivity and social media. You know, you kind of talk about all these different dimensions and then you have one topic. And it's really important to do it this way because you're centering your expertise around all of the different factors that you can think of as a service provider. So since I work a lot with service service providers, one way that you can look at it, if you're like, I don't know anything about chocolate cake, this isn't helpful. <laughs> Another way that you can look at it is problem, solution, and results. And you just kind of keep going through these three dimensions of it. What are the problems that my customers have? What is the solution that I can offer? What are the results? So this is a basic way of looking at it. So you could be like, okay, like I'm, you know, any of these things, you could be talking about email marketing to bring it back. What are the problems that you see people have with email marketing? How would you suggest that these different problems get solved? And what are the results that they can expect? And that's another way you can tackle any of these topics. I like it. You like A it? Delta, right? A Delta, I know. No pictures. Um, if you want to see uh, what this looks like in real life, let me show you on the Women Conquer Business website. Um, I feel like I have done a fairly good job of tackling this problem. If you go to the Women Conquer Business website and you go to articles, you'll see that you know business, leadership, marketing, reviews, because I do a handful of product reviews, and then resources for subscribers only. So then if you go in here, <laughs> these are different, basically, product hubs. These are different areas of my expertise. And if you dive into any of those, you can get more articles and get more information. Um, or if you scroll down, you can see all of them. So there are a lot of different ways of doing it. This is a very straightforward way. Um, you can do it any number of ways and get to the same result. It's really about just helping people get to understand you in a more holistic way. That's right. 
And my, my central is uh, the Livecast lifestyle. So I can go ahead and add, you know, say, okay, live streaming is part of it. Podcasting is part of it. Blogging is part of it. Social media posting and and uh, contacts is part of it. Email marketing is part of it. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. a, it's the hub is all around the live cast lifestyle. Yeah. And that's how I'm creating my course to cover all of those things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, and like Cynthia says, that's what service providers do solve problems. And I think that that is fundamentally true. And also something that a lot of people forget. <laughs> That's what we're doing all the time. So it's okay to also be solving some problems in your content. You're not giving too much away because a lot of times people are never going to do it themselves. They're not, but they want to hear whether or not you can help them with that. And then they're more likely to engage with you. So don't be afraid to go into that, you know, problem solution results Delta, as Shelly calls it, where you're talking about those things, because when you start grouping your content together based on expertise, you're in a really good place. So if you want to know how to take that to the next place, what we're really talking about here is looking at your areas of expertise, looking at your services, just to wrap this up, and then doing some brainstorming sessions around all the different areas within that that you can be talking about. That's really what this is. What are all the different things within your areas of expertise? Like Shelly mm -hmm. just listed off a whole bunch. So that's why all of you have all of this expertise from within. You have a gold mine within you. You talk about it all the time. You're answering the same questions over and over again. Now take that and share it in a systematic, meaningful way so that people understand. They're more likely to get you. And that's what you want. Yeah. And that's how they resonate. Yeah. <laughs> Become more loyal and bonded to you. That's right. So, wow, I feel I feel a little tired. No, I'm just kidding. It's a lot of work. <clears throat> so I know it sounds overwhelming, but you can do these things over years. This is not something you have to do right away. Like yeah. you just have a list and you just start like checking that stuff off. So um Thank you, Cynthia. I'm glad that um, this is excellent information for you. If you like this information and this kind of style, I highly encourage you to subscribe to the Women Conquer Business newsletter. Uh, that is at womenconquerbiz.com slash newsletter. And every week I share tips that are similar to this, <laughs> different topics that are helpful to people, especially service providers, uh, and help them get exactly what they need to move their business forward. I subscribe. <laughs> That's right. Get it every Sunday. Every Sunday, every That's Sunday right. morning. And then uh, what do you have for us? Oh, uh, so yeah, I have a free Livecast Life workbook that you can download that walks you through all the steps of becoming a Livecast uh producer. And uh, you can get that at guide.livecast.life. Hey, yeah, it's cool. All right. So let's move on to, um, are we moving into tweak of tweaks the of the week? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's your tweak, Jen? Tweak of the week. So I have been, like I said, I've been so heads down on this Association of Philanthropic Council work that I have, I, and as you noticed, maybe today, my slides that did not include chocolate cake, uh, all of that was created in Canva. Canva has been making some minor changes and tweaks inside of their program to make presentations a little sharper. I think it also helps if you're developing graphics. So I've noticed that they're now sharing with you, like if everything is equal distance, um, they're sharing if if everything is lining up just right, they're making it a lot easier, I think, to make your graphics better. And since I have these massive presentations, I've noticed that they're no longer limiting the number of slides, which is fantastic. So I have a lot of really long presentations that I like to give. I tend to use Canva because I like pretty or organized. I don't put a lot of content on mine. and you know, 
the Google decks, they just don't do as much. Those slides, uh, I find PowerPoint to be maddening and frustrating. And so I tend to use Canvas slides. I know that last week, Shelly, you talked about using Google slides and animation. So I think this is all just about personal preference. I mean, the right tools are the ones that you use, right? That's right, that's right. The ones that work well for you and have become part of your life. Yeah, <laughs> use them. Do you have a tweak of the week? Uh, well, I've been using a lot of Bitmojis and I think they're a lot of fun. If you're interested, they do have a Chrome extension, Bitmoji. You can uh, create a little, and a little cartoon person that looks like you and you get to design it. You get to design their face and their hair and what they're wearing. And it's a lot of fun. And then you can uh, incorporate that into your emails. If like all you wanted to do was respond back and say thumbs up or team awesome or something like that, you can pull those in very easily. You can pull them into your slides. You can pull, uh, you can use them on your phone. They are, integrated with Snapchat, if you're into that too. Um, you can also, if you're a couple, you can, you know, send things out as a couple. My daughter does that with her husband. So there's, they have little couple emojis and they're both in it and they're like, oh, happy Mother's Day or something like that, or thank you or whatever. And the two of them are together and they're a lot of fun. Um, check it out and play around with it a little bit. It's, it's It can be a lot of fun and it can be like a little bit of a, you know, cartoon representative of you. And I think it's just another way of, of adding to your own personal brand. Yeah. I like Bitmojis. I, I, I used them for a long time and then I don't know why I stopped. And then when I made my Bitmoji, everybody said it didn't really look like me. And then somebody else made it. And I was like, I don't, think that looks like me. But anyway, I think they're fun. I always love it when you send me emails and texts that have bitmojis in it. I think they're, they always make me smile. So yeah. uh, I think that that's, I think that that's important. So, yeah. so there you have it. Those are our tweaks of the week. Are you ready, Shelly, for the inspirational nugget? Yeah, let's do it. So this is from Marcus Aurelius, Meditations, and he said, you could enjoy this very moment, all the things you are praying to reach by taking the long way around if you'd stop depriving yourself of them. So ask yourself, what is it that I want? What am I working toward? What is important to me in this life? And, and why am I striving? And when you answer that question, try to get to the to the deepest level. And when you do that, most often you're going to find that you want to feel secure. You want to feel loved. You want to feel supported. You want to, uh, it's a feeling that you're after. So if you want a new car, there's a feeling that you're after. What is that feeling? Is it pride? Is it, um, you know, uh, security? What is that feeling that you're looking for? Then instead of waiting until you have that new car to feel that way, find a way to feel it now. Maybe you just uh, think better thoughts or maybe you can be counting your blessings basically and uh, taking stock of all the things you already have in your life, all the people, all the support, all the love you have in your life. And you can get to that feeling that much quicker instead of waiting until you get to a certain place in life you can start feeling those things now. And uh, I think that's that's a really wonderful way to to live each day is just to be grateful for what we have, uh, count our blessings and, and share the love, right? Uh, I think when somebody in your life passes or has a, a major incident like a stroke, it really reminds you to, um, you know, take those moments and, and connect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I think that's yeah. really important to remember that. And and there's just been a lot of things going on in the world and in our lives, it seems lately. And I think that that's a really important thing to do is to take a step back and and not deprive yourselves of the fun and the, the joy, thinking that it, you'll always have time later because you might not. That's right. That's right. So I, I think that's a wrap for today's show. Okay. Thank you for joining us today on Women Conquer Business. And next week, we'll be talking more about those pillar posts, the skyscraper content. 
that will help you be at the center of your expertise. So we talked, we didn't talk at all about chocolate cake. We just talked about all the other parts, like the frosting and stuff. So next week we're going to get into the meat of the matter and everybody out there have a really great week and uh, talk to you later from sunny Portland, Oregon. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you for joining the Women Conquer Business podcast, hosted by Shelley Carney and Jen McFarland. Please subscribe and leave a comment or question regarding your most challenging content creation or business problem. Then share this podcast with family and friends so they can find the support they need to expand their brand and share their message with the world. Check the show notes for links to valuable resources and come back again next week.